you've never talked shit or poked fun at anyone you're fighting but somehow suddenly you're poking fun at me that's showing your first card showing your first hand well in the ufc since 2019 early 2019 yeah but i've always felt this way like i've always felt this way anyone who's watched my journey i will just say kind of like ali he said this quote i'm the greatest i said it before i knew i was from fight number four in kickboxing i remember just feeling like i could be really like the best at this i didn't know how i hadn't because okay look i'm not athletic i'm big and black i can't play basketball i'm nigerian football is not my thing i'm from new zealand i don't play rugby you know like i couldn't catch a ball for shit. they called me butterfingers in high school but somehow i was just like i'm good at this fighting shit. and i just felt like jackie chan whenever i fought so i was like i could be the best at this and the conviction just stuck with me and yeah here we are still with me it's it's one of those things as well like when i first started i remember my first fight the the feeling of it because i fought this guy you know david tua right he's a boxer yeah, from New Zealand, yeah. legend this guy had a haircut like him like the high high top fade and he was definitely not in my weight class but then when i fought him the first like i, I, I stood in front of him and this is my first ever fight mm -hmm. amateur fight and in my head i'm like this guy's gonna whoop your ass holy shit like, <laughs> you can't fight holy shit he looks mean he's gonna kick your ass and i touch gloves yep let's go Boom. i touch gloves go to the corner and then within the first 15 10 seconds mm -hmm. i remember i dropped him with a drop kick and this feeling of confidence just surged through me and mm -hmm. i remember just feeling like just god mode but yeah. then after that everything else was a blur and after the fight everyone was like man you did amazing Fuck, you were this you were that you were that and i was just like really okay I, my, my brain wants to move forward because I did it in kickboxing because I was undefeated for so long. So it was always like, all right, cool, what's next? I'll watch the fight maybe once, study it, all right, what's next? But now I have to like chill, relax, look at the tape, look at what you've done, and then soak it in, smell the roses for a little bit, and then move on. Yeah. Because once I had my first loss, I, I took winning for granted because it was just a habit. I was always winning, always winning, always winning. So now I have to like, when you win, when you do something amazing, like I did in Atlanta, like I did in Melbourne, just chill, smell the roses, and then move forward. I mean, a lot of people, this is their goal. They're like, I want to become the UFC champion. They get it done. And then what happens after in the next fight, they lose it. They lose sight tr track of what really matters. It's, it's harder to stay champ than it is to be champ. This is pe most people's like, they've clocked the game. And then you see a lot of people just fall off after this. Then they, they don't have that because they've done it. They've done what they wanted to do, what they set out to do. I've done one thing that I set out to do, which is become the UFC champion. Now it's about defending that actively, not like fight twice a year. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people will just expect, it's, it's, it's different. I, I'm, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run my own legacy, not like anyone else or compared to anyone else. I'm gonna run my own legacy and, and what are you gonna carve my own way? Those who were in here setting up la last night or yesterday evening, I came here with my crew and we rehearsed uh, the entrance and I did it probably about four times or five times and I did the whole walkout and I visualized everything and I did the whole prep point thing and I stepped in the cage and I cleaned the space and I did that about four or five times and I also did the win, the victory. Like just visualizing it and I imagined the whole place lit up with people and loud cheerings and boos and people by the side what they're saying to you and just practicing it. I know for a fact I'm the best in the world. I've said this before over and over again until it's just tiring. I said it before I even go into the UFC. When you clean out your division, when you clean out all the killers in your division, you got to move up in weight. Beating all the baddest dudes, that's the real challenge and that's the real goal to me. I have. During fight week, you have a lot of time. I've been to watch some, some episodes to kind of like put myself in the mood. But that fight, for the cluster fight, I was feeling quite dark. I was feeling quite, because everyone wrote me off from my fight before because they said it was boring and I was a boring fighter. I'm like, Ooh. And yeah, the Akatsuki shirt just happened to just, I, I, I don't plan these things. They just happen to happen just because, I don't know, simulation, whatever. But I just felt like, yeah. I'm on some they did our shit. Like you're gonna see my art, you're gonna appreciate it. And oh yeah, they appreciated it, man. They, they they did. It's not about the belt. It's not about that. It's about legacy. And I'm chasing all the big names in this game. Every one of them. When it's all said and done, they'll be like, man, that guy is he. That guy Styles. He's the one. He's the goat. This really isn't for me. This is for like the the young generation coming up who who get to see someone they can relate to, someone who is 
of my essence, if you will, a combat athlete that they can feel like, man, my sport, you know, like Muay Thai or Jiu Jitsu or wrestling is up there with the likes of the All Blacks, the Black Caps and the Tall Blacks and New Zealand's top sporting teams. And we're on the level playing field. And when we, like I said, we've been doing this for a long time, so this is for them. And this is for my team, City Kickboxing. This is for my coach, Eugene Behrman, because without him, my career wouldn't be, I wouldn't be here. After Atlanta, my coach, he was kind of worried because I was going to Nigeria, I was going to all these shows. I got to like show it off, flex it, but he's my coach. So Eugene's like, man, you know, don't think you're the champ yet. But I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm the champ. But then there was a point when we moved gyms and I just kind of, all right, put in this box with everything else. And mm. then he kind of posted about it because he saw like, okay, the switch happened. Like it's game time now. So same thing, I'm doing my tour right now, victory tour, walk around, do all this shit, but then even being at the fights last weekend, I got FOMO, because you know, after the fights, I you know, I see what's up, people talking about me, right, right, right. So I'm like, man, I gotta get back to the gym. So when I get back, I don't even look at this thing. Find the interview, I said, like 50 Cent when he dropped in the club and then he shut down the rap game for like six to eight years. I told you guys, once once Africans get a taste of MMA, they're gonna realize like, shit, I can be great at this, not just football. It's gonna be a rap.